Have you been witnessing to future saints? Hmm. What do I mean by that? Well, um, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but there are people that uh, you'll meet, and they are very fervent for the truth. But you look at them and you just think, I know that the Lord's doing something in your life, but I just don't think that there's enough time for that person to get saved. I mean, maybe they will, but I've seen this thing. I've seen whole movements of people that there's a lot of good things about them, and yet it's just, I feel this thing of, they're not going to make it in time to be part of the body of Christ. Um, the truth is there, it's being revealed, but it's as if, you know, they're going to have to um, die in the future. Just to be quite frank, they're going to have to be faced with the decision of taking the mark and worshiping the beast in his image or dying and going to, to heaven. Um, you know, there are people, I guess, that you could say if you watch my other video that, that uh, they aren't going to be able to live as a Christian, but they could die as a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's kind of weird, you know, because I've seen this thing out in stores or out at places or, you know, out in public. You go get around people, you start talking to people and things. And and um, I can just see there's some people that definitely, they're pointing towards the truth. But it's just, it's not registering completely up here yet. They're going to need to see the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the full title of, you know, what the Bible teaches, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we also see the opposite of that, and that is you see people and you think, boy, when the mark of the beast comes, they're taking it. <laughs> you know, if you know what I mean. Uh, you might be related to some of those types of people, uh, people that are just going to completely conform. And um, so, just being... Come on, move. Luther down here. Where is he? Oh, he's okay, he went behind me now. But I just want to say this video, or just wanted to make this video to, to just say, please do not be discouraged. Um, our job, according to the New Testament, not going back to the Old Testament to try to say, he that winneth souls is wise. We have to be soul winning Christians. Uh, that verse has nothing to do with preaching the gospel to people. It's talking about having a winning personality, being kind to people. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about a bishop supposed to have a good report of them that are without. That's what it's talking about. It is not talking about preaching the gospel. Um, there has been a lot of sales and marketing brought into uh, Christianity, and they use the soul winning thing to uh, get people into their church buildings. And that's the reality of it. I'm not going to teach that nonsense um, he's making sure he's not being chased by something um, but anyhow our job in the New Testament according to the New Testament is very simple very clearly laid out and that job is that we are supposed to plant seeds of truth in people all right duck underneath the branches of the apple tree here if you'll excuse me we plant seeds that hopefully will bear fruit if you know what i mean <laughs> um and paul says about i have planted apollos watered but peter gave the increase because he was the first pope uh no um i have planted apollos watered but god gave the increase that's the point here brethren um we are supposed to plant seeds and right now i know it's frustrating because a lot of people just do not want to hear they're not listening um they i mean we can look at the news and everything else and we can say wow you know central bank digital currency that's the mark of the beast um you know smart cities and whatever that's going to be the beast system all this uh high-tech video stuff and whatever else well that's the image of the beast you know and this 
these giant giant statues that change and morph into different images you know that'll be the image of the beast as well holographic stuff and that they're coming out with and all the different things that are going on and the famines and pestilence and earthquakes and diverse places and wars and rumors of wars and, you know we just look at the news and we think wow it's got to be coming soon the catching up of the body of christ it's going to be happening soon um unless you're work salvationist you know post tribber then you believe that you have to go into the time of jacob's trouble to get purified and uh, you know you could lose your salvation because you took the mark of the beast uh, that's a problem <laughs> you're sealed into the day of redemption according to the scriptures but uh if you take the mark of the beast then you lose your salvation a little contradiction there if you're non-dispensational but they don't worry about things like that just pretend it doesn't exist <laughs> But uh, getting back to the topic at hand here, um, and again, you know, if you haven't, if you don't understand the timing of the resurrection, that it's before the time of Jacob's trouble, then you need to spend some time studying. And don't be a little, you know, know-it-all, smarty pants, and put in the comments, oh, you're following the Jesuits, and you're following the blah, 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 C.I. Schofield, and John Nelson Darby, and blah, blah. just be quiet. And go and listen to the over 160 studies that I've done on the issue, answering every single question about the timing of the resurrection. I am not ignorant of that issue. It's probably the strongest issue that I know. Um, there is no argument. The body of Christ is leaving before the Antichrist shows up. Uh, proved it many times. Don't even waste my time in the comments. Well, what about this? What about that? Just go watch the studies. All right. Um, I've been in ministry for a long time. I am not ignorant of that issue. So, but uh, we are supposed to plant seeds and water those seeds. But um, a lot of the crop isn't going to come up until after the body of Christ is called up. And that's going to be something. It won't be, you know, the radio coming across the radio, you know. Um, Authorities are saying that millions have disappeared suddenly and we don't know what happened and whatever. That's not going to happen. Uh, first and foremost, it's not going to be millions that disappear. Uh, thousands, perhaps, or something. I don't know. There's, the body of Christ is not that big. Um, there's a lot of false converts. Um, and why? Because that's what Jesus said. Okay, few there be that find it. You know, there's a broad road that goes to hell and a very narrow road that goes to heaven. And few there be that find that narrow road. Okay, the Lord never said that the vast majority get saved and that there would be, you know, uh, millions and millions of Christians that are saved when, you know, the resurrection happens. Uh, we which are alive and remain, you know, the Bible talks about there in, in connection to the resurrection, alive and remain. Uh, if you look at the remains of a body, that means that the whole body is not there. All right. Most of the body of Christ is actually in the ground right now, awaiting the resurrection. Um, the very small part of the body of Christ is actually um, going to be called up. Uh, very few people are going to make it through to the catching up. I mean, think about John, who pictures the church uh, when he's called up. Is he in fellowship with... Uh, 10,000 other Christians or something like this? No, he isn't. John is there by himself on the island of Patmos. Uh, an old man, and um, he's there all by himself. So most of you are by yourself. We are by ourselves. You know, uh, Brother Brian, are you in fellowship every Sunday with lots of other Christians in your area? No, actually, we're not. We've met a few professing Christians in the area, but, uh, you know, we don't really fellowship with them or anything else. We have work to do. Um, our job, uh, we love to fellowship with other believers, don't get me wrong, but our job is to get the truth out there because we don't have a whole lot of time left, you know, in the church age. And um, so that's what we do. But I have to understand and I've come to the place of understanding where my job is to plant as many seeds as I can and if those seeds have already started to take root 
maybe try to water them a little bit, but uh, a lot of the crop, so to speak, um, is going to actually actually come up in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's when a lot of the truth of this ministry will come out. You know, we say a lot of things that people say are kooky and nuts and weird and whatever else. Old Denlinger thinks that uh, church buildings are evil and whatever. Well, what about in the time of Jacob's trouble? Hmm? Um, the whole world will worship the beast? Where do you worship at? I've been making that point for years, you know, and people are like, well, well, you know, we're not there yet. <laughs> but we will be eventually. We'll be there at some point in time. And um, what do you do with that? So, um, you know, we, we've made a lot of statements. We talk about, you know, you want to be debt-free and everything. How's that work out in the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, you know, Brother Brian says we shouldn't be in debt, but... Uh, I think it's perfectly fine and necessary you know we need to be in debt occasionally and whatever you have to have debt just to live in this world and what are you going to do in the time of Jacob's trouble if you if you're a postie and you think you're going into that time how are you going to make your bank payments you might want to take our advice um, I come out here and I say you better learn about the wild nutritional edibles and things so that you can stay away from the medical establishment what do you do in the time of Jacob's trouble all you posties out there, what are you going to do? Are you studying how to heal yourself out here? You know, I haven't been to the doctor in a long time, and I don't ever intend to go back. Uh, even if I get really sick, and I've been very sick before where most people would run off to the doctor. I've fell down and hurt my back and hurt myself and cut myself really bad. I don't go to the doctor uh, because I know that there's a lot of bad stuff there with the medical establishment. But what are you going to do in the time of Jacob's trouble? You know, if I was going to be going into the time of Jacob's trouble, I'd be building an underground place here somewhere on my, on my property. Uh, I would be, you know, learning ultra survival skills and whatever else. Um, I mean, it'd be frightening because you're not just going against the, you know, antichrist government and whatever else. You're going against God. If you're going into the time of Jacob's trouble, um, the Lord, when he opens the seals, he's causing those things to happen. Again, the, uh, a lot of the posties will come out with this thing and they say, you know, that Lord, when he opens the seal, it's just sort of, he's looking and seeing what happens. Uh, no, God controls everything, you know, um, you know, there's this little cliche that they come out with and they'll say, you know, um, I forget how it is. The seals are what the devil does to the church and the trumpets and vows are what God does to the world or something like this. I forget how it goes. If you know it, put it in the comments section below that these posties will like to say this little mantra that they have, you know, that we're going to be here for the seal judgments. And no, we're not. No, we're not. Uh, if we were, why would God take John up to heaven before the first seal is even opened? And why are the 24 elders there? And why is the great number of angels, the, the 200, less than 200 million angels around the throne, why are they there? Which, you know, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Um, that's who it's talking about in Revelation chapter 5, before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation chapter 6. It's so simple. But no matter how many times I talk about it, I still get people saying, oh, we're going to be going through it. Well, I'm sorry to hear that for you. It's a shame that uh, you didn't get saved and that you aren't going to be going into that, you know, that you can miss the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for Israel. It is not for the church. The church does not need to be further purified. So, um, we plant seeds, brethren. Uh, we don't have to, you know, don't feel guilty that uh, you aren't leading you know, hundreds of thousands of people to the Lord or something. Um, the end times is characterized by, you know, being like in the days of Noah. Um, how many people did Noah get saved? I mean, was it thousands upon thousands of people that Noah brought with him on the ark and, you know, his, the first Baptist church of, you know, whatever with our pastor Noah? <laughs> no, eight people survived the last time God uh, judged the whole world. Eight people. And they were all members of the same family. 
it wasn't you know well no and and some of his children and his neighbors down the street and whatever else uh no uh the people probably thought that Noah was crazy just like they think about you and me and you can just see it the simple going towards punishment going towards God's judgment so um God will work it out brethren we plant or water the seeds that have been planted but God gives the increase okay you can't save anybody I can't save anybody you know, uh, Brother Brian, I'd like to be saved. I want to be saved. Could you please pray for me? Uh, no. Um, you pray yourself. Okay? Pray to God. Go to God and say, God, I want to know what it means to be saved. Show me from your word. I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven when I die. Um, I'm willing to give up my life. Live for you. Pray. Pray. Ask God. Okay? Um, be, you know... I get a email or something, brother Brian. My house is on fire. Could you please call 911 for me? No, I don't know where you live. I don't know the details of your house or whatever else or the, who the fire department is or you know. No, I can't do that. If I call 911 from my place, it's not going to call and, and activate your 911. You have to do the calling yourself. All right. Um, I mean, that's just the way that it is. But you see, we're going to have people that we witness to, and um, it's not going to look like it's yielding anything. There's no fruit growing. There's no anything. And, and you say, well, I had a chance to talk to my brother, my uh, sister, my uncle, my you know, co-worker, whatever else. And uh, they're, they're interested. They didn't say no. They didn't tell me off or cuss me out or anything else. They're interested. But... Uh, why? I just don't know if there's enough time for them to get saved. Well, there might not be. Because a lot of people are just in slow motion right now. They're, they're in shock by what's going on in the world. And they're, they're kind of thinking, well, I don't know what to think about this. And, but there's constant satanic distraction that pulls them away. Well, talk to them. Plant some seeds. And if you get another opportunity to talk to them again, what are those seeds? Say, hey, did you have a chance to think about what I was telling you? Did you have a chance to read that Bible I gave you? Did you have a chance to read the track that I gave you? Plant, water, but let God give the increase. Uh, you are not going to be held responsible for getting home to heaven and, and the Lord says, you didn't win that soul. <laughs> he won't do that. Hey, good job, you planted. You even got a chance to do a little bit of watering on that seed that you planted. Nicely done. Uh, they didn't make it to the resurrection, but uh, I'm dealing with them right now. And all those kooky things that you said that they were kind of thinking is a little weird, you know, you're going to be caught up and all this other stuff. All right, and there's the mark of the beast and everything. Um, okay, you know, central bank digital currencies are going to send me to hell and, and all of a sudden the catching up happens. And then they're looking and saying, I remember what they told me. It's coming to pass. They said that there would be this weird guy that would show up that's claiming to be Jesus Christ. They're, I can't believe it's actually on television. That's the Antichrist. That's what we have to look forward to, brethren. You can't fail when you plant seeds and water seeds. You can't fail. Ever. So do that and uh, let God give the increase. Okay, so that's going to be it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please be encouraged, brethren. Um, just do right. Do what you're supposed to do. People are going to call you crazy, but they won't be calling you crazy in the future. See you in the next video.